Damn, Q. Maybe you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy vs. Everybody Podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. The champ is here! Boy, Shy, Shy vs. A Bite Podcast, episode 157. We got a special guest in the building. She wear a, a million hats. Like, <laughs> got that. We're going to start with the, mo- the most important hat is you a mom. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mom, model, curator, stylist, art director, uh, dictator of taste, mm-hmm. singer, manager, athlete, run track, 100, 200, yep. all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Cancer, you know what I'm saying? June, baby, what? June oh, 29th? Oh, you did your research. <laughs> I June love 29th. that. June 28th. June 28th. Okay, okay. That's yeah. my, uh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, we got, uh, Micah Shoemake. Yes. I said it right, right? You did. I want to make sure because I ain't want to mess up your last name. Perfect. How you feel? I feel great. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad for you sure. guys have me. I'm really honored. For sure, for sure. And I, I've been peeping your, uh, IG since you did something with my, uh, my young boy, uh, Brandon Kearney. Mm-hmm. You did something. He was on the show a year ago. I seen he did something with you and, um, I started following you and I'm like, oh, she seemed pretty dope. I really like to look at people and see if I would like to have them on the show because some mm-hmm. people look boring. You seem like you got like a good life. <laughs> yes, my life is 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 pretty groovy. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that it it looks fun enough for you to be interested to have me for on sure. the show. For sure, that's important. That's important. Yeah. But we're gonna start off, since you know you got a lot of hats. I want to get into your your background, but I want to start with you being a mom. Mm-hmm. You know, you you got a little son. Where he four or five? He's four. Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Judah, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I do my, you know. I love that. Like, it feels good. <laughs> for sure. But talk about being a mom and balancing everything you got going on, but still making sure you got time for the most important thing, which is your son. Absolutely. Um, I think just being a mom is, is such a blessing, and it's beautiful. And it really has grown me as a woman. Mm-hmm. Like, just, you know, softening me, understanding how to love better, how to be more intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, but at first, I was kind of, like, freaking out because mm-hmm. I've always – saw myself taking over the world Mm -hmm. and not that kids are a hindrance of that, but they definitely like slow you down. Mm -hmm. Like you kind of have to compromise your time and and have more intentional efforts Mm -hmm. just to, to show up. And so I love being a mom. Mm -hmm. He's super cool. Mm -hmm. Team boy mom. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> at at this point, I do want more kids, but I think I would just appreciate all boys because they're appreciate fun. All boys, huh? He's amazing, and yeah. I'm like kind of a tomboy too. Yeah. And he lets me style him, and we hang out, and so yeah, I love being a mom. It seems like you want a daughter though, just to, you know, too. As, as far as like, I'm surprised that you said you want all boys. Yeah. You know what? What what's, what's you think? What's wrong with having a, a little girl? Because I I said that at first until because I got two older boys and I got mm-hmm. my youngest daughter. So when I had them, I'm like, you know what? I think I need a little girl to make me a little softer and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, not that I don't want a daughter, but I mm-hmm. really appreciate... Like, I'm the girl that has a lot of guy friends, mm-hmm. right? So I have a brother, and we're like 13 months apart. For sure. So I'm used to like being around guys, understanding mm-hmm. them. Like, yeah, I yeah, work yeah. with guys. And for me, like... If I have a daughter, I'm like, is she gonna be like me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm high maintenance, right? Okay, okay, okay. So I'm kind of like, I got a lot of questions already. Just it'll be it. a cha- <laughs> yes, it'll be a challenge. It be, I think it. Well, parenting in general is just a challenge, mm-hmm. um, because it grows, it grows you, it stretches you. Mm-hmm. But I hear that girls are harder. Yeah. I have two other sisters, mm-hmm. and my my brother is the only boy, so yeah. he has three sisters. Okay. So I hear it's a little yeah. bit more. With, uh, fun. with you being mom, what's something that changed you that you wasn't even expecting? As far as like. You might have been wow. You might be doing this, but once you had, you know, saying little man, he, you know, he brought change to you that you needed that you didn't even know until you had him. I think consideration and quality mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. I love people. I'm very people passionate, but and I'm extroverted. I'm I'm extroverted, but at the same time, like I find myself like withdrawn okay. in my relationships. Okay, you okay, know. Okay. Um, whether it's family, it's friends, it's romantic. Mm-hmm. I just like my space, mm-hmm. right? But you can't really like go in the closet mm-hmm. when your child wants to hang out <laughs> yeah, with you, sure. right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You have to say, okay, like let me compromise. Let me be intentional about spending time with mm-hmm. this person. And so, not only am I just intentional with like my time with Jude, mm-hmm. but also like showing up as a 
better friend, as okay. a better daughter and a better sister for sure, and for a sure. better, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think being a mom or being a parent, it just helps you like understand people more mm-hmm. and, and understand like what intentionality looks like. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, well, well said, well said. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I almost forgot too. I always start off every show and I didn't do it this time. I got right into it, but I start every show with salute me while I'm here. A lot of times you wait for people to pass away to give them their flowers instead of telling him or her how much you love them while they, you know, they're still around. Mm-hmm. We wait to make that long Facebook post about Craig and, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I love Craig, but Craig yeah, ain't here. Exactly. But it can't be the easy answer. It can't be mom, dad. It can't be if you're in a relationship, kids or siblings. Or, uh, siblings. got to be somebody out of that, you know, easy answer. So So it can't be a family member. It can't be, but it can't, it can't be, it can be a cousin or something like that, but can't be sister brother kids or mom and dad i mean thankfully i have not lost them okay yeah yeah thank god um, for that right so you got somebody you want to outside that you know that yeah you get some i would say my dad's mom mm-hmm. and i would say my mom's grandmother mm-hmm. those are women those are beacons mm-hmm. on the shoemake side and the bank side mm-hmm. i'm east side girl so i'm from the east side thank god, thank uh, god. lake point side. whittier oh yeah you from the hood. Uh, yeah i'm from the hood <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure oh, yeah. yes like i used to be over here on um damn what's that street Damn, go ahead. I was <laughs> but yeah, so I lived on Lake Point, lived on Dupree, East Side Girl. And those are women that really are, like, when you talk about being unapologetic, mm-hmm. when you talk about holding a family together, yeah. when you talk about women of power and empowerment and staples. For sure. Oh, like those two women are like, I mean, they're part of like my makeup as a person, my DNA, Mm -hmm. but I just wish that I was in the mature space to really like use those words and tell them how much I'm blessed to like be their granddaughter. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I would say Queen Esther Banks and Deborah L. Shoemake. So this is your grandma and your great grandma? Yes. Oh man, and they still wrong. Um, they're not, they're not wrong. Okay. So you ain't get it there. (laughs) Rest in peace to them. So they have to be around. Yeah. Oh. Okay, you want to salute them while they're here? You are not that clear. Yes, I was. <laughs> I feel like you... I... I said that we made that long statement about we love somebody when they're gone. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> so it got to be somebody More still emphasis. around. More emphasis. Okay, yeah, you got to get that part out. But, 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 we, we want to show love. <laughs> we, I'm like, man, that's a blessing to have your great-grandma alive. Um, but no, we want to show love, you know, rest in peace and love to the, you know, grandmothers. There's so many people. It could be a couple people, you know what I'm saying? It ain't got to be, you know what I'm saying, down to one. Okay. Um, I would say my grandma, my mm-hmm. mom's mom, she is around. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm inspired by her because she loves people. I love how she loves people. Mm-hmm. She's very selfless. Mm-hmm. And I think oftentimes it's hard to put others before you mm-hmm. and still have the balance of self-care and self-worth. Okay. But she's always like, I'll give you the shirt off my back. Mm-hmm. And like, I've watched God bless her times 10 from her just being selfless no 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 so no no now you said you said two things that stood out to me when you used to watch your son you said being high maintenance and having a lot of guy friends mm-hmm. when you when you're in a relationship with a guy mm-hmm. you know or relationship period like how do they do they look at that as far as like okay damn i gotta deal with her and she got i gotta make sure i come correct with you know what i'm saying with different things and having guys as friends can that be a deal breaker in a relationship um <laughs> you said we talk about anything. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they like it over here. I mean, yeah. I am high maintenance, okay. right? Um, and then those that are into astrology, they mm. read whatever they read about cancer and women. Um, Sensitive, whole stuff. Right. Yeah. Don't I don't cry a lot. I yeah. do feel, and I know how to, you know, navigate and communicate effectively to, to let you know what you did wrong. Okay. Do you wait and build, hold it in before you let them oh, know? Oh no, I'm direct okay. in right. front of anybody, and that's the downfall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think men like know that I'm a challenge. I mean, even when I'm getting to know someone, I want to be his friend first before sure. we kick it off. So there's guys that approach me like, do you have a boyfriend? Cause I want to be with you. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And they have guys the that kind of like, you know, like, I don't hang out. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is my friend. And it's like, no, like I actually want you. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for me, it's like, I feel like I'm already a lot. I mean, I do a lot of things. I have mm-hmm. a child. Mm-hmm. I make my child a priority. I make, like, taking over the world a priority. Mm-hmm. So I think for me it's, like, being open as possible and letting the guy that is interested know, like, she is a lot, okay. you know, and she's very certain about herself. For sure, for So sure. you have to be secure and certain about yourself, too. No, most definitely, most definitely. Now, get to that one question about having a lot of guy friends. 
Um, you know, a lot of girls say they got guy friends, but it really ain't friends. It really somebody y'all ain't messed around, kicked it with, whatever in the past. And now you want to say that's your friend. How when a dude you're in a relationship with, if he don't really like, you know, saying that type of stuff, is that relationship over before it even happen? Because I ain't gonna lie, if if, if, if my girl, if my girl, <laughs> I tell she got a lot of dudes. I'm like, hold on, let me. Let me meet these dudes and see what's going on because yeah. I don't really trust too many guys. Yeah, no, I definitely understand that. I think it's human nature for mm. that to happen, right, from mm. opposite sex. Mm. But, again, communication is important. And for me, it's like I've had guys that I'm strictly not interested in. For sure. And I'm like, yo, let's all hang out. Come meet my boyfriend. So yeah. that my boyfriend already know, like, mm. you know, he may pick up on things that I don't. And I'm open to hear that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think for me, like, I know how to have a platonic relationship with a guy. Mm hmm and genuinely really be a friendship and yeah, not yeah. like because you know one of that sometimes you be like man you know dante really doing me dirty man then he like oh for real he used uh, yeah because people be sneaky yeah, yeah people like, are sneaky oh she 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 she, she right hurt. like i'll I be can, your shoulder to cry mm -hmm. on right but i can move right on in yeah but nah man. Yeah, <laughs> i'm direct in that way i gotta let fellas know i don't see you that way for sure for sure for sure okay okay now it's 2023 mm -hmm. we in the uh what we in the this is the second quarter how your year been so far? And um, what's some things you took away from last year that you wanted to maybe change up this year? Hmm. Loaded question. Um, uh, I, you know, I try to make, you know. Yeah, dang. Try, try to make you think a little bit, talk, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yikes. Um, 2023 has been amazing. Like, I really, my goal was to work with a lot of corps. So I'm like, I want to work with the big fish. I want big fish money, right? Mm. And this year was that, like, and it's only, what, April? Yep. But I've really been working with some big fish. And although I feel like last year was more community-based mm -hmm. and, like, really, I guess, putting myself out there as a creative, mm -hmm. um, it had a lot of challenges as far as access and discernment. Mm -hmm. Like, just because you have good moments with people, they're not always going to be, like, your ride of day people that you need to talk to every day. For sure. And because I am personable and I love people, I think mm -hmm. sometimes the downfall is, like, oh, my gosh, this is my friend. Yeah, yeah, but no. Because we just work together. <laughs> like just that. like, yeah. Micah, like, no. Yeah. Like, she's great. He's great. But everyone just can't be your friend. Mm -hmm. And so this year, you know, I think my circle has, I've been intentional about keeping my circle the same. Mm -hmm. Because I want these people to experience me at my worst, mm -hmm. but also reap the, the benefits of me at my best. For sure. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think for this year, it's like honing in on like who's really for me and not against me. Mm -hmm. And making sure that I take them wherever I go. For sure. For sure. For sure. Now, what's some things from last year that, that kind of held you back that you had to change going into the new year? I think I partied too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and granted, like, last year was, like, my first time really, like, partaking anything. Like, I am a pastor's kid, and I have a wild side, but, Another you know, I, I'm a control freak. <laughs> yeah, I am sure. a control freak, so I don't like to do certain things to leave me looking crazy. And last year, I was doing things that had yeah. me going out sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and, man, yeah, if I can be honest, whereas yeah. this year... You know, like, I'm more in tune with, like, what I deserve as a woman. Mm -hmm. Like, romantically, what, is, what do I deserve as a woman, like, when it comes to friendships and mm -hmm. whatnot. And so I think just be intentional with um, how people go about, like, using me mm -hmm. in a good way yeah, and not yeah, yeah. misusing me or mishandling me. Now, you speak on high maintenance and romance. I got a question just off of me. My cousin was talking. He had been going out with this. He went out with this young lady a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And he was like, damn, after a couple of dates, I think she should pay for something. Okay. Like, so what, what's your thoughts on that? Me and you, we going to damn girl. Like, hell no, Cam. <laughs> Cam is yeah. like, I'm, I'm leaving. Me and you, we hanging out. We ain't, we know we just homies right now. Yeah. You know, I took you, we went to bars, restaurants, whatever, three or four times. The fifth time, I'm like, damn, it's, it's Micah's turn. Like, what, what's your thoughts on that? Like, it should it always be on me? Or that's when a relationship is, like, we all together. Like, me and my wife, we take turns. Yeah. But we married. Yeah. So you feel like doing the dating or the, the you know, just hanging out, that's all on the man? No, I'm actually, I want to stay at home dad. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought she was going to spit your water out when oh, I no, said I, that. I, I would say, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, sign me up. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want to stay at home dad. So usually when I am dating guys, I think there's a kind of sexy where a woman can be independent and mm -hmm feel led to treat a guy without demasculating i guess him if that mm -hmm. if i can say that for, sure. for better terms and so for me i'm someone that like 
am okay with paying, right? Mm -hmm. Even in the first date, like, here, I'll pay. I'll yeah. pay a couple times. Yeah, I got yeah. it. I'll pay it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not more so focused on whether or not he pays. I think I'm more interested in, like, the thoughtfulness of, okay, Micah really has been paying for us. Mm -hmm. So let me take it this time. For sure, let me grab for sure. it this time. And that's why I think he's looking at it like, hold on. I've been paying a lot. Like, just, yeah. And we, because we, we know you balling, because we was all out with her, like, she balling. <laughs> so he like, he like, hold on, it's your turn yeah. now. Yeah, so I think for me, it's like, thoughtfulness can't be taught, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have to teach someone how to be thoughtful. For sure. I think it's just being mindful and consider, like, yo, like, <laughs> shorty, I've been paying for you. Yeah, like, you got sure. it. Like, can you treat me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's okay. So that's just, I think that comes with, like, being thoughtful and aware, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Now, when you said being a uh, preacher's kid, yeah. we always had these thoughts of a, of a, you know, the girl whose dad's the pre preacher and she being sheltered, and once she get older, she get loose and go crazy. Is that like, <laughs> is that how it is? Like, like, and then like when you having a kid, I believe with boy or girl, you gotta let them have some type of leeway because yeah. they gonna have curious minds and be like, all right, I ain't, I've been restricted from doing so much. Mm. Now, once I'm at, I'm 18, I'm at college, I'm loose, I'm going crazy. I would say that was me. Okay. Um, but I think I learned quickly mm -hmm. that that's not the way. There's a saying, they say, um, experience is a school that only fools go to learn. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you can be the person to touch it because you want to see how hot it is. Mm -hmm. Or you're the person just like, okay, well, I see that you struggle, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. I think just the way that I am, sometimes it causes me to actually have to do it for me to figure out like life yeah, if sure. that's so so i guess i could say i'm the fool that goes yeah. Yeah, 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 to yeah. learn but um yeah i mean i went to chicago and i you know yeah. i did my thing i'll go touch on that too a little yeah. bit later, a little bit later. i went to chicago yeah, did yeah, yeah. my thing and um i think i needed to come back home mm -hmm. I and mean, just one because i need to reel it back here like this is not me mm -hmm. and also like this is not fulfilling for me mm -hmm. but also i think it was like okay detroit kind of needs what i got mm -hmm. and so why go to chicago when i can bring it here but for sure, for sure. Yeah. definitely the preacher daughter that had a little rebel in her yeah yeah, yeah. Cause i was gonna ask about that too i know you went to columbia yeah uh, uh, chicago right mm -hmm. and then uh, you had to come back home and stuff like that when you went to school out there and did you feel like coming back home at first? You looking at it now like okay, it was a good thing, but coming back, did you feel like it was a you know kind of I was a failure? sad. Yeah, like damn, I'm I'm failing. I'm coming back home. Like everybody look at me like, oh, you couldn't handle it. You couldn't do it. I so people so I have a great support system, right? So mm -hmm. not really a lot of work curses as much as much of like disappointment. Mm -hmm. I think if anything is like Chicago is way more out there fashion and create creative wise, and mm -hmm. this is when Detroit was not really like. It kind of was like forgotten yeah, for yeah, real. For sure. Wasn't so going on. I went to Chicago supposedly going to class or whatever, and like my parents found pictures of me like smoking weed. <laughs> you going crazy? And, <laughs> you know, like spend night with guys, being around yeah. guys, like being in guy heaven. Mm -hmm. And so I was mo I was more disappointed in myself, like dang, like I could have crushed it. Like I was studying ballet, like dance was really my life in fashion, and mm -hmm. I kind of missed out on like taking advantage of it because I was so focused on. Yeah being out here no for sure for sure hell yeah hell yeah you said you out there you smoking good good green yes like <laughs> alley around. pictures yeah. like just alley like just stupid alley pictures like in the alley going to the south side like oh this look like detroit y'all I'm, I'm on the south side this yeah, look like detroit man. just doing dumb stuff right yeah 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 so so you said you came back home yeah and shoot everything kind of like when good for you i was in that same situation yeah okay. uh, as far as like not going to school because i mean i wish i wouldn't went to school but I was on some bullshit. But uh, anyway, I went to Texas, mm -hmm. and I went down there with the wrong girl. I shouldn't have went down there with her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Kiss my ass. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I went down there, and when I came back home, I'm like, all right, I got to make things happen. Because yeah. when you come back home, everybody always feel like coming back to Detroit, you fail. Right. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you leave, because the bigger picture is leaving and doing big things. And exactly. Then, That's what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I came back, I made things shake, made things happen. When you came back home, like, how surprised were you that you made things happen and you know what I'm saying, started growing from, you know, being back at the crib. I was very surprised because, mm -hmm. again, Detroit is not at all where it was. Mm -hmm. There was an underground scene, right? But mm -hmm. it just wasn't, I'm like, how do I even do this? So mm -hmm. I'm like, do I need to go to New York? Do I need to? But, like, ended up going transferring to CCS. They offered me a big scholarship, study fashion accessories design there. Mm -hmm. And then it was just like, this is kind of boring. Then got pregnant. So mm -hmm. I think for me, it's like, 
all these things kind of confirm like Detroit is your playground, Detroit is your canvas. Mm -hmm. And like what you have is not something that you need to go somewhere to look for and learn. Like you have it in you. So why don't you just do it here? For sure. And it felt good, like planning shoots, working with people, mm -hmm. and seeing that there's other people in Detroit that have a similar mindset like I do to put Detroit on to expose the community to more than what we see mm -hmm. and whatnot. So yeah, I love Detroit. Okay, now now that you uh you doing your thing, you in the city, mm -hmm. do you still have thoughts of moving and leaving, going somewhere else? Absolutely not. Oh, you here? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So New York, all that stuff, like that's. I'll go for a show, but yeah, like yeah, my but... residence mm -hmm. is gonna be in Detroit. Okay. Like, I mean, I want to have a couple of property other places, for sure. but Detroit is gonna be like where my kids are are brought up and where my for family sure. is. For sure, for so. sure. Who? Oh, you're speaking of. Like I said, you tell me shut the hell up. I don't need it. You know, you and the dad. You and the, you know y'all y'all rocking or co-parent. Okay, good is like a good co-parent or like a bad co-parent. It's a good co-parent. Good, great, great. Cause we had some man it'd be some bad. You know, I, I'm I co-parent my oldest son. My oldest yeah. son, sixteen, and me his mom. You know, high school. You know how it is. But we good. Like ain't no beef. Ain't no arguing. Ain't no. You know, there's just a pointless. bad. I was gonna say there's a bad uh, stigma around co-parenting and the baby mama, baby daddy drama. Mm. Um, but for me, I think it's like I have had the opportunity to have two parents mm -hmm. um, in my home and see a healthy marriage. Mm -hmm. And his dad's parents are still together okay. for 30 years, same as my parents. So I think more importantly, we want to make sure that Judah has like a, a whole experience when it comes to um, what what parenting him looks like mm -hmm. and what a family looks like. So. For sure, for sure. That's what's up, that's what's up. Now, the only thing is make sure the people that he get where you get where is, you know. Yeah, I mean, my man gonna be the one. Yeah, gotta you be know? good people and stuff, you exactly. know what Exactly, absolutely. Now, so. when life, life life be hard, you know what I'm saying, you know it, it you, 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 you old, you old enough, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But who can you talk to when times get hard? Like, who can you go to, go to when, you know, your head ain't right? Um, I would say my parents. Mm -hmm. Um, I have mentors, mm -hmm. I have friends, siblings, like, again, I'm really spoiled. Mm -hmm. So I have some really good whole people around me mm -hmm. that can offer wise counsel that can check me. And I'm not really good to, with, with, uh, getting checked, mm -hmm. but <laughs> you know, it, cause I'm like a little, like my, everything goes to my head. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you and I'm personal. Yeah. And I'm also like a critic. Like yeah. I'm really hard on myself, but I think at the end of the day, it's like, these are the people that love me the best mm -hmm. and love me the most. Right. Yeah. So it's going to always come from a place of love because they want to see me excel, but mm -hmm. they are the people that I can rely on that can like put me together and bring me together when life be life in. For sure, no, because that should be doing his thing. Yeah, especially <laughs> like when you have that high. Mm -hmm. it's like when you have a high, mm -hmm. like that low is low. But you know what's kind of messed up is when, I, when I'm when at a high, I'm always ready for, I'm like, I'm always anticipating the low to come. Is yeah, because you know it's going to come. Yeah, it's like, fuck, like, I hope this shit don't hit too hard. Like, Yes, <laughs> you got to prepare for that much. What's the, what's the hardest life to hit you? Because life to have me in the bed about the crowd, like, damn. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't gonna say about to with shit. I was. Yeah. Um. I would say losing friends. Okay. Like I, again, I'm very personal, so it's like I really be trying to take people like on the journey that I am in. For sure. And can't take everybody though. You can't take everybody, uh -huh. and it's not even sometimes it's not even about you, and sometimes it's not even about them. It's just the way that your personhoods are together. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's like I've there's been people that have really wanted to see me like excel and exceed and i've had to accept it like that their season is over yeah for sure yeah and that's the hard thing not because like when you see you rise and they still right here it's like oh, damn i gotta let motherfucking Felicia and you go. know that you can bring them with you yeah but if you bring them with you they might bring you back down once you, you know yeah. what i'm saying they block things yeah that'd be hard man rest yeah. in peace to those people who can't come with us yeah <laughs> But what's your day-to-day -day life away from all this, from the fashion, from just, you know, just having fun? What's your day-to-day -day life like? So you want to know what I do to have fun? Or you want to know what my routine is like? To have fun. Like, just away from the business side, the creative <laughs> side. What's fun for Micah? I like to eat. I like cute food. Oh, what, what the hell is cute food? <laughs> cute food, yeah, like, like aesthetic food. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it don't just look good, but it, it tastes good. Yeah, well, I think a cute food, I think some pizza, that's cute. No. That's fine. That's that's, that's beautiful. Like, like it has to have some arugula on it. Okay, like, okay. some fresh Parmesan. Like, yeah. 
you know. Oh yeah, you. Famous. But I, yeah, I like food. <laughs> sure. I like cocktails. Like, yeah. I like experiences. I like to go to places in the city and have a time, meet new people. Mm. Um, I like parties when a DJ is like really creative, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of things to have fun: hiking, camping. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm really adventurous, Living like life. anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's what's the worst advice and the best advice you got so far when it comes to fashion, whatever you When it comes to fashion? When it comes to just or just in, in general, general. In general. Um I think I usually get terrible advice when it comes to relationships. Mm. Like someone recently told me, Girl, you need to go get your man mm. and it was just like, No, I don't. Yeah, just go like, get him right now. This is not this yeah. not like this is toxic. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. No, go this, Amazon. I don't need to go get this toxic man back, yeah, yeah. right? Um, but I would say advice that I've gotten that's positive is I think in moments of despair or when we're overwhelmed, you know, you, you kind of forget who you are. Mm -hmm. And I like that people are like, you're Michael Schumacher. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, Dictator yeah. of taste. Mm -hmm. You're the girl that is a world changer, planet shaker. You say you want to own the world one day. So sure. while it's hard right now. Mm -hmm. You want to own the world. Yeah, for sure. It comes with the territory, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I like when people gas me up because it's true. I gas we, myself yeah, we up. we need that. We need that. But it's the, the language, right? Yeah. The language that they use is what I use to, like, build my community up, to build my friends up, to build my family up, to build myself up. Mm -hmm. So, when someone's like, girl, you Micah Shoemaker, when it's like, Micah Shoemaker, but say she Micah Shoemaker. Yeah. Like, that's good advice for, for me because sure, it's on brand. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so, what's yeah. Up. That's what's up. I told you she'd be a dope person to talk to, though. I knew I kind of knew a little bit. <laughs> I'm glad. My judgment is pretty good so far. You know what I'm saying? It makes my heart warm. What's the first adult decision you had to make? Um, Having a child. Mm -hmm. Right. That is, I would say is that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's so many different um, opinions and ways on having kids. And I think for me, I knew I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, I'm a believer that babies are a blessing For sure. and so even though you know you have people your family like navigating how they feel about it right mm -hmm. i think for me it's like i have to make this decision mm -hmm. and that was my first adult decision because yeah, 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 yeah. i'm not raising someone else's child it's yours it's yeah. mine for the <laughs> for rest sure. of my life you can't right? say till 18 i hate when people say 18 no it's like you have to be intentional about their their well-being, mm -hmm. like their brilliance, like all the things that they want to pursue, mm -hmm. their safety. Oh, yeah. my gosh, dentist appointments. Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. this Everything. goes on. It's yeah. not just about you anymore. And so I would say that is probably like the biggest adult decision <laughs> that I was in control of yeah. and that I'm happy that I made because, sure. again, like while I had to discuss with his dad, he was my boyfriend, my fiance at the time, mm -hmm. At the same time, like, that is, like, it's coming out of my body, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, yeah, that was a big adult decision. Yeah. Every time you say something, I get another question in my head. Like, okay, you always engaged. Like, how'd it end? Um, if you, <laughs> I, I, I like to know stuff. I know, I see. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's good conversation. You, uh, yeah, it is. You can um, pass. You can, you can take the, you can, was, you can use your pass. I was young, and I, again, like, I... Always were around guys, but it was like my first adult relationship. Okay, right? okay, okay. So yeah, and he was intentional and just great background mm -hmm. and really gentle with me, mm -hmm. and handled me in ways that you know a lot of guys because mm -hmm. of maturity couldn't. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was like it was great, and I said yes, and I wasn't like reassure yourself really. Like I was yeah. still like becoming a woman For sure. and yeah. also pregnant. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. my hormones and not wanting to be this, another baby mama. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so it looked good. Right. You know, right. So, yeah. Like everything was, you know, like really intense and overwhelming and like, he's still like amazing man. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, like I just needed to like be a whole person. For sure. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think as far as being whole, I wasn't a whole woman For to sure. be someone's wife. Yeah, that's a mature ass answer. <laughs> now, uh, how old were you when you had your? Because I was young when my when I had my uh, oldest son. I was uh I had just turned twenty. Okay, so I was twenty two. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. So now, yeah, you gonna be one of those flop moms when he graduates and stuff like that. So, cause I look at it now with my oldest son, mm -hmm. when he graduates, I'll be thirty eight. I still be young. Yeah, you still gonna have the energy. To yeah, with my baby girl, I'm gonna be fifty two. Like damn, I'm gonna be tired. You are gonna be tired for sure. <laughs> you so gonna be tired. Sure. Yes. I got, to, I gotta go take those doctor's appointments and make yes. sure I'm good. Uh, yes, be healthy, work out, all that good stuff. Now I'm about to get, I'm about to get into you know personal a little bit. Okay. When the last time you cried, what was the reason? Hmm. When's the last time I cried? Man, you too much. You too much of a thug. I cried yesterday. 
I you know what? <laughs> I was hurt too, boy. I I I feel it deeply, but the tears don't come. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to work on softening my heart, honestly. Yeah, yeah. But I would say, oh, I cry. Sure. I cry All Star Weekend. Okay. Um, one of my um high school friends passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, and he died to just really weird situation they said it was drugs we don't know Mm -hmm. we don't know if it was hanging out with the wrong people but it really touched me because like i lose a lot of people in my family like a lot of people unfortunately like i'm used to grief and grieving trust me i know we know about that too right too often but losing a friend like losing the family you kind of choose yeah yeah and like he knows what like he knows all the great things that's going for you just Mm -hmm. say congratulations on your nba deal like and i lost him to something that i feel like even though it has nothing to do with me, I was like, dang, if I hung out with him that day, exactly. he wouldn't yeah, have you died. Could, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I cried about that. And around the same time, I, I lost a friend and he didn't die, but I just feel like our time was up. And mm-hmm. I wanted to take him to All-Star Weekend with for me. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, he was a former athlete, so I, it just made sense for us business-wise. Mm-hmm. And I was really like hurt in that moment. Like, I'm, I'm grieving these seasons yeah, yeah, and yeah. still celebrating going to the NBA and showing exactly. my artwork. Yeah, trying to have a good time, but still in the back Like, just sad about, yeah. like, death and sad about seasons really yeah. being nah, over. For sure, for sure. That's, so I cried, and yeah, I, yeah, felt yeah. good. No, sometimes I cry, I do feel good. I cried, yeah. I watched Snowfall yesterday, and I was hurt. Oh, wow. But I was hurt. I cried three times. Is it like, good? Like, everyone says it is? Hell yeah. Okay. That's a, I watched that shit like, oh, my God. I was at work. I had to go to the bathroom real quick, put some wear in my eyes. Mm-hmm. I was hurt, though. Yeah, I man. need to watch it. Maybe Rest in peace, it. Snowfall. That was a great show, though. Maybe, we'll, yeah. I need to get those tears flowing more. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Now, uh, you was, you spoke on All-Star Weekend. Like, mm-hmm. what was your uh, involvement with the uh, All-Star Weekend? It was in Utah. Yes, um, it was in Utah. So, basically, I, I did this um, program where I was designing with New Balance and working with their creative team. Okay. And it was a master class at Penso. Mm-hmm. And so, that just recently opened up as the HBCU college in the city of Detroit. Mm-hmm. Um, and this guy, amazing guy, Dwayne Edwards, Dr. Dwayne Edwards, okay. he basically is not from here. Mm-hmm. Um, decides to come here, open up a school, mm-hmm. um, design with Jordan, design okay. with Nike, crazy pedigree and just wants to help other creatives out in the city mm-hmm. of Detroit. And so attended their master class, connected with some um, amazing designers. And um, because I attended, he kind of knew what I was capable of. And so he emailed me and was just like, hey, the NBA, HBCU, they're looking for some artists to mm-hmm. showcase their work for yeah. All-Star Weekend. Yeah, dope. What is, your, what, what is your resume like? Send me your resume, send me your uh, portfolio. And mm-hmm. that's the one thing I will say for people that are watching, but also you guys, like, always make sure you're about your business because you never know when someone reaches no, out. for sure. You ain't ready. And gives it to you and you're not ready because yeah. you sit on your behind. For sure. That's and so fact. for me, I was like, okay, my resume is ready. Okay, my, sent it, right? Started working and um, and was accepted. And so the NBA invited me, flew me out for free, mm-hmm. paid for my travel, gave me an um, a expense card, and then also commissioned me for my oh, artwork. Shit, and bought, out there doing it. <laughs> and, and purchased my artwork. Yeah. And so it's in the NBA house. That's what's up. Um, now, what's but up. it was a piece that really showcased like being black while also being a fashionista, mm-hmm. being a former athlete, and just being unapologetic. And mm-hmm. so I did a couple of players fashionistas and kind of like design this all-star weekend merch Mm -hmm. on my artwork and it was just an amazing time Mm -hmm. met crazy people like saw Shaq he's tall and wide (laughs) you know saw a lot of athletes and you know I'm around guys all the time so a lot of them I was like you're little like I thought you'd be bigger than this but it was just crazy to like see Dwayne Wade to see these amazing players Mm -hmm. and I'm walking past them and we're both just regular human beings no for sure for sure that's dope congrats on that thank you congrats on that yeah yeah that's dope. Cause I seen that shit like, damn, that's what's up. Like you out there doing your thing. Yeah, but, it's from Detroit. Yeah. From Detroit. And what you said was important. A lot of people want to make it with whatever they're doing in life, but they're not prepared. Yeah. When that time come. So you say you ready because like you don't have to go ahead and, oh, uh, I got to make a resume. Nope. You got everything right there and there. Boom. All right, you need that? I'll yes, give it to you. Cause absolutely. People ain't prepared for the for the time when they... You know, it's just like when you play basketball or football and you're on the bench and mm-hmm. you never get called. You've been crying about playing, yeah, but you ain't ready. You ain't been taking no like, shots. Like, are you in the gym? Exactly. Working hard. Exactly. Right. So you got there, you turn the ball over, like, man, go sit your ass back Right, down. like, sit down. <laughs> 
So Why you got you ready. turnovers? Be ready, be ready, yes, fellas. Yes, be ready. Guys, girls, be, be yes. ready. Okay. Oh, shit, yeah. Peace out, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if you had to describe yourself to someone without using words and can only use a song or an album, what would it be? Yeah, that's deep. Because <laughs> the reason why I asked you that question because you, you put a lot of music into your... Into your um, your stories and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and your and your reels and stuff. Matter of yeah. fact, it was a song that you had posted. I took it and looked at it. I'm like, damn, that shit sound dope. I, I, I got to tell you name afterwards. Okay. Like, I looked at my playlist, but. um, I'll probably say uh, Lauren Hill. Okay. Um, Because she's very creative, but she's also very unapologetic, mm -hmm. but she's also very tender and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And the way she communicates is like, I'm for you, not against you, but this is why I'm against you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And... Yeah, I think that she is me. Like mm -hmm. she, you know, she's a mom, um, lyricist queen, very mm -hmm. deep, but it's not that deep, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. So, so yeah, I think yeah. for me, it's like I can get misunderstood sometimes because I'm someone that like really wants to like help people. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes my deliveries can be in different, mm -hmm. but like I'm a crybaby, but I'm not for sure. For sure, I'm this, but I'm not. I can yeah. be like. In that dual space, like mm -hmm. I'm this, but I'm that. For so sure. I would say Lauren Hill, and I mean I love Frank, so I'm always gonna say Frank. Yeah, yeah, Frank Ocean. Yes, my yeah, favorite. He, he been he been he been wilding as a lake. Huh? He, he has, been, but <laughs> the whole Coachella thing, and he shouldn't have gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I heard he had one the whole ice rink in that mud. Then say, you know what, I don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, man. So artists are like that though. Yeah, a lot of divas out here, you yeah. know, like that, man. For yeah. real, for real. Artists yeah. are like that. No, for sure, for sure. Now, um. What's some, you do a lot of things, but what's mm -hmm. something as a youngin that you wanted to do that you never told anyone? Like, I wanted to be a tap dancer, but my parents couldn't afford a tap dancing lesson. It's like, this is real life? You want to be a tap? This is real life. I, want, I seen this, this is movie. If you go back, people, if y'all ain't seen this movie called Tap. Okay. Tap is with Gregory Hines. Gregory Hines was like a tap master. And he had this little kid in there. His name was uh, Savion Glover. Mm -hmm. he, a young, he, he was young. He, he older yeah. now. Light-skinned dude. He was tapping his ass off. I'm like, you know what? I want to do that. Yeah. So I put on my little church shoes and I was in the bathroom, <laughs> kitchen, you know, trying to get my little tap on. But my mom couldn't afford it, so that was just something that I threw in the, in the garbage. I mean, I had to pick them shoes back up. Yeah, so tap and playing the piano is two things I wanted to do when I was young that okay. I never did. Um, wow. I would be tap my ass off, boy. Too. <laughs> <laughs> tap master. Um, honestly, mm. well, I, I can say two things. I've always wanted to be like, a electric guitar mm -hmm. guitarist for sure um like I can see that for you instrument i i did play the cello mm -hmm. um and i like i know some some things on the guitar mm -hmm. but it's not developing fast enough yeah, right for sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. um and then basketball because i feel like you know i'm tall mm -hmm. i've watched my brothers play like i'm around athletes all the time mm -hmm. and so i understand the way the game goes but you know like, I I really, in my head, think I'm sweet, yeah, right? Yeah, you're a baller. Right. I feel like I'm a baller, but then every time a baller sees my jump shot, they're like, shorty, like, no. Like, just get the video. Like, just get the video. Two-hand push shot. Because I'm, like, tall. Man. And, like, I have a athletic body. And, you mm. know, I went to tra I did track. I went to states. Like, mm. I'm an athlete. I have an athlete mentality. And I think that's why I excel in business. And I excel in the creative industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the way basketball is supposed, like my dribbles are terrible. Man, so no shot dribble. Like <laughs> it'll go in, but yeah, like I just... shoot it from the side, and then my arm hurts and it feels out of socket. <laughs> but like I have the hype for it, and I have the, like sure. the competitive mindset. Yeah. Like I'm about to eat, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Love Kobe, like favorite player yeah, of all my, time, my soul, right? My soul. Just plays with finesse, yeah. like and really his work ethic is out of this world. Mm -hmm. But I'm just trash at yeah, basketball. Yeah, damn. So I'm just not about to like try yeah. to be a basketball player. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you in your mind you can hoop. In my mind, like yeah. I got like I got handles. Yeah. Like I will break your ankles yeah. right now. But you make the moves like huh? I'm gonna break my ankles too. <laughs> For sure, yeah. You're gonna be out here hurting. <laughs> yes. Now, absolutely. We, oh yeah, and, and that street was Balfour. Balfour. Okay, That's yeah, my, Balfour, my, my, yeah. Yeah, over there by uh Meringue and all that and Denby. Meringue, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Meringue, man, Balfour, yes, shout out Cheesy. Meringue. But um Talk about growing up. You kind of touched on it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Both parents in the house. Yeah. Married 30 some years or whatever. Yeah. Uh, preacher kid. Yeah. What's some other things like, you know what I'm saying? As far as like that was going on in the household, you know, siblings, 
How was how was life for a young Micah, you know what I'm saying, on the east side? Um, life was great. I mean, like, yeah, like, we were on Lake Point, Moraine mm-hmm. and Whittier, and mm-hmm. had family on McKinney, had family on Dupree, had family on Lenark. So, mm-hmm. we were like, e- like, re- I'm really an east side baby, for real, for real. Thank God, everybody um, come over here be from the west. <laughs> Man. I'm from the east. I live on the west now. Me too. <laughs> um, because, you know, the way that things are going on over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot better. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, um, no, life was great. Like, my parents were great parents, put us in camp, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I went to Marvin L. Wines Academy on Nevada and Van Dyke. So, oh, yeah, you right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah so, I, I coached basketball at the middle school down the street from there. Oh, wow, yeah. So that's that literally yeah. was, like, my life. Vacationed a lot, but, like, we were, like, the Kool-Aid house. Okay. <laughs> so we was house that everybody was on. My mom was making cookies for the kids. Yeah, for sure. We had the basketball, like, the NBA, like, the nine-foot rim. Yeah, like, yeah, we yeah. had a trampoline. So everybody was over our house. Like mm-hmm. all the neighborhood kids was pulling up at our house, uh, doing gymnastics in the front yard because my sisters were like doing flips and stuff. So mm-hmm. I felt like life was really good. Still, we're vacationing. Um, our church was on Chalmers and Gratiot. Mm-hmm. So everything was on the east side, but mm-hmm. like I still had like a life outside of just being like on the east side. Mm-hmm. But you know, never seeing my parents argue. Or mishandle each other, or aggressive, any of that. Like, and 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 I say this all the time. Like, they're not people. They're not pushovers at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. they really understand like the love of God, how to keep the love of God at the center of their relationship, mm. and also how to love one another. For sure. Right. For sure. Um, and so, haven't really had like a trauma experience as a child, just because my parents mm. were like amazing examples of like. How to love Christ, how to love your family, and how to love your spouse. Oh, yeah, definitely shout out to the parents. It's funny you say that because that um the uh, last weekend, me, my wife, my cousin, his uh a friend of his, we had went wine tasting, and she as she was talking about her childhood growing up, it's like <clears throat> damn, like you see how life can be already prepared for you through the your parents. Yes, and I say it to say like she was talking about like how her parents were putting her up on this business credit and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and my parents didn't know shit about credit. Mm. They was working regular jobs, making yeah. you know, what I'm saying, getting living week to week. Yeah. So it's kind of it's 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 crazy in a way. It depends on how you look at it. Growing up, you can either capitalize off that or you can fall victim to yeah. your parents. Yeah. And just like it's funny, like coming, like everybody come from different backgrounds, and you see how like sometimes people have advantage just because of their parents and how they place them and stuff like that. So yeah. you saying that your, you know, your parents, they loving each other. They've been in a relationship. So you kind of like know what love is. Yes. A lot of people grow up, don't know what the fuck love is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So of course that's going to lead to fucked up relationship after fucked up relationship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and hurt and bruises. Yeah. Cause hurt people hurt people. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't like, I've been hurt in relationships before, but because I have this longing, this desire to like have a whole relationship. I know like what I deserve, and I also sure. know what someone it. deserves yeah. to from me. Yeah, because right? yeah. the Cause old man be like, "Oh, you old, you live, you you live the old pamper life." But when you grow up, you're like, "Hold on, you live the good life that you were supposed to live." Like, yeah. I mean, I thought my life. <laughs> granted, I was sheltered, so there was a lot of things I couldn't do. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't going to Harpo's and twerking sure, with my sure. friends. Like, I yeah. couldn't do that. For right, sure, for sure. A certain amount of time, I had to bring my tail back home. Yeah. Right, because you know what I'm saying. Like, I. And, and, and parts of it was like, dang, like maybe I wouldn't have wild out so much if mm-hmm. I wasn't in shelter. But as far as like really like not need my parents to shake me together and me understanding, like I have my own moral compass. For sure. I think, yeah, like I'm, I'm happy to say, like, I understand even as a parent, I understand why my parents made the decisions that they mm-hmm. made for me. And mm-hmm. I think that's why I'm like, you know, not strung out on drugs or for something sure. like <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad. For Mike better terms. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad. You're playing Mike and I on drugs. Man, yeah, real. I'm not on drugs. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, we, we spoke on college and you going to college and having to leave. What would be your advice to a uh, to a freshman, well, a senior right now going to his freshman year of college? What would be your advice to him leaving home, going out of state? Like, what would be your advice to that young, young man or young woman? I would say to not be hard on yourself, but also to make sure what you want mm-hmm. and go after what you want. For sure. Now, do you, like... Do you feel like they got to have a mature mind to go and leave? You was right around the corner of Chicago. You wasn't too far, but you were still away from home. But, yeah. you know, do they have, a, have to have a mature mind to leave and go out of state? Because now you're on your own. You're away from your parents. You got to yeah. figure things out. You know, I think 
um, I always seek wise counsel, right? doesn't mm. matter how old you are. I always seek wise counsel. Mm. But I think for me, like, if it's a lack of maturity, it's talking to someone that you feel like their lifestyle kind of embodies somewhat them being a teacher to you. Mm. And see what they think about it. For sure, for sure, for sure. Now, fashion always been, that's I can say that's been your main thing from jump. You was cutting out stuff, you know saying? Cutting clothes, putting on your Barbie dolls. Yes. And, Getting in trouble for school wearing uniforms and trying to literally you know, suspended, like yeah. suspending me for wearing fishnets and boy ties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, like when did it become like okay? I'm like I'm liking this as a little kid, but you like all right, this is what I'm going to do as an adult. Like this is going to be my life. I think it was like, unfortunately, I would say it was senior year mm -hmm. <laughs> because it was like you know people were you know you take the um, the ACT and the SAT and. Mm -hmm. You know, you're doing all this college prep stuff. Mm -hmm. But for me, I was just like, I just want to be a ballerina. Okay. Like, study ballet, was doing ballet, taking ballet classes. And then I didn't know I would be as successful in track, mm -hmm. like, in cross country. So I really thought that I would do something in ballet or mm -hmm. track. And then I was just like, oh, yeah, I am good at fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to these schools that really embrace fashion or the arts. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to camp. And so I think my senior year was just like... First of all, I had a terrible track coach. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, did not put me in any of the events that I was supposed to be in and kind of botched me, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it was just like, okay, well, as an athlete, your life is pretty much over at 28. Mm -hmm. Your body is just like, I'm tired. Stop, yeah, for sure. Right? Wrap, yeah. So I have to have somewhat of a backup plan. And I think at the time, there were schools that had, were sending me things, and they were art schools. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's when I was just like, Okay, like, this is just God saying, like, girl, like, just yeah, go for it. Like, yeah, stop being scared. Yeah, get your mind right. Exactly. Get your mind right. So, <laughs> sure. yeah. Now, um, now when it gets to these questions, it's going to, some, some may seem a little stupid, but just because I don't know too much about no, the fashion I don't. world. So, I just want to know, on the crib side, fashion shows. Talk, you, you, was, you was at a fashion show yesterday. Mm -hmm. Talk about how stressful a fashion show can be and what makes a successful fashion show. Okay. Um, I think the stress of fashion shows, I would say, is time. Mm -hmm. There's so many different people and components when it comes to a great show, right? Mm. Um, and anything can mess it up if someone is maybe 10 minutes late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever's doing lighting, if a model is late, then sure. we can't start until that model is here, right? Mm. And so I think for me, you know, you definitely want to talk about time. And time, and that comes with having a production schedule. Having a schedule that everyone can be on one accord with. Having a mood board, like... I communicate different. Mm -hmm. You didn't cuss about a thousand times. I haven't cussed once, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. we're I'm here. a bad person. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're not a bad person, <laughs> but your communication style is different from mine. For sure. But we're we're aligned on this episode, right? Exactly. Because we are understanding each other. Mm -hmm. So you have to have effective communication, and you have to have a production schedule and a mood board okay. so that we can be on one accord. Okay. If, 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 if your parents watching this, I'm sorry for all the cussing. Oh, no, you're good. Okay. <laughs> like, hey, not... Who is this dude you was messing with on the east side <laughs> cussing? No. It's not even that. I just wanted to say like we all just we can communicate but we just, communicate yeah. different but as long as we're on the same we still page each other. exactly and that goes with fashion shows there's people that you know they're like he's he's doing our whole audio and sound right mm -hmm. if he's not there then yeah how are we gonna do this for sure for so sure. i think everything in a show in a production has key components and as long as we have that production schedule that is talking us through what happens when and where mm -hmm. We're all on one accord, and it's a smooth, it's a smooth show. For sure, for sure. Show, got producer, so. cusser. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. You're funny. Because I'll be, sometimes, I, I, I must say, mm. I look at some shows like, damn, I should, I ain't had to cuss right there. You it's know? okay, though. Yeah. It's like you being you. We need that. Yeah, but I got to understand, I know how to cut it off. Like, when I'm around the kids, and when I'm coaching, mm. I coach basketball, I cut it off. I got to cut off around my baby girl, because she pick up on stuff like that. Mm, she yeah, too. Can't be, mm, I told my older son, I said, sit your ass down. I didn't know she was right next to me. She's like, Shy, sit your ass down. I'm like, oh. Dang, so yeah. then my wife cussed me out. So I'm like, oh, let me go ahead and change up how yeah. I, I speak around her. You know, I, got, I mean, I have friends that are cussers, and I just, I don't know. I don't really care. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, we communicate totally different. For sure. It's as if, like, you meet a West Sider, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, you from the West Side? I'm from the East Side, right? Yeah, you can tell And y'all get to talking, y'all like, oh, I like yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. I like you too, For right? Sure. <laughs> For so, sure. So, yeah, like, it's different communication yeah. styles, different deliveries, but yeah. we're literally, like, it's but, about to be a great episode. For sure. And sometimes that helps like with my relationship my wife is totally opposite to me mm -hmm. a lot of people say they ain't gonna they ain't gonna help as far as relationship wise we we almost the same 
Son, she's a cancer. Hers is June 24th. Mine's June 21st. Okay. So I'm like the last day, like Gemini beginning of cancer. I don't know. Yeah. But I, they, theoretically, we don't post a line together just because cancer and Gemini's or two cancers don't, don't match. I mean, that's what they say. That's the, I mean, I don't know any cancers that date each other and the cancers that I date, I would never date them. <laughs> yeah. See, exactly. Um, just my, my preference. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. But, uh, where was I going with this? The, oh, the differences oh, yeah, oh yeah, differences, and, yeah. differences. So I bring out a different side of her, and she bring out a different side of me. Mm-hmm. So I, I believe that you know, two people opposite opposites attract, yeah. and it makes sense sometimes. I think it's the strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, honestly, some people like like the, they're dating themselves, yeah. and some people are like I actually want you to like grow me. Exactly, like, can exactly. You grow me for sure. So that's yeah. a fact. That's a fact. Because like we, we was having a conversation, our cousin was like kind of saying I brought like the. I brought some out of her that mm. she was always inside, secluded, didn't want to be around people. And when I came around, she was more open, you know what I'm saying, being around places that she had never come and stuff like that. So, I love that. Yeah. yeah you so know. you're kind of bringing out like her extroverted. For sure. And she's probably balancing you out like, yeah, actually, she, you need she to stay telling, home. Exactly. And she's telling me like, hey, you need to pay these bills. You need to do this. You need yeah. to handle your business right and stuff yeah. like that. So, like come back home yeah, for, for a little bit. For sure. For yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It definitely changed me because I used to be out in the streets. Now I'm like. I'm at home watching the game. Well, you probably embrace that. Like, I don't even want to go out. No I don't. And I kind of just want to be home right I lo- now. I lost friends because of that. They don't understand that. I don't want to hang out no more. Like, it's maturity, though. Mm-hmm. Real friends will understand where you are in life. Exactly. Exactly. You hear, you hear that, friends? <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst show you've been a part of? The worst show. Or you seen, like, damn, this shit is not going right. I don't know what the show was called. Yeah, it was bad already. I don't know what the show was called, but... The communication was terrible, mm-hmm. and there were a couple people that were over it. Mm-hmm. And I don't like. I came in to, I was helping my friend mm-hmm. um, with his collection, and so I came in. I kind of grabbed him some models, and you know, and so I booked his models and then helped him get dressed and kind of made sure that his his um, portion within the show went smoothly. Okay. But as far as like the 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 way that they were talking to models and the way they were handling the designers, it was really chaotic and unprofessional. Yeah. And okay. I think at the end of the day, like, what brings longevity to a business to a show is how you treat people. Okay, right for sure. Your generosity and how genuine you are. And I was just like, this is terrible. Like it, it could have like models a collection was beautiful, beautiful gowns, mm-hmm. right, beautiful gowns. But it's how you treat people mm-hmm. that will always stick to me. In my head, and For I was sure. just like, it was a terrible show because I don't like how you talk to the models. Fast, fast. Now, when I watch like these fashion shows, sometimes people be wearing like some weird stuff. It'd mm-hmm. be like big stuff, you know what I'm saying? It's just stuff that I wouldn't see people wearing every day. Mm-hmm. So when you they are when they are, they are modeling the line or clothes, or whatever, where do you go to wear that type of clothing? Because <laughs> like um, sometimes like damn what what would like you where go? I'm about to go yeah, like, for, yeah. <laughs> uh, they say it's like avant garde so avant garde camp. Mm. Um, they can say it's conceptual, experimental fashion. Mm. It's usually like celebrities are mm. people that are creating like maybe a movie or a music video, mm. um, that or even a photo shoot that typically wear things like that. Okay. Um, it depends on what it is. Like I had on this like really like it was stiff. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the one where I had to like. Yeah, but that actually walk like weird. something that you go. You, it's like something that you could rock though. Right. Like you know I feel like it was. It could be functional too. But like I'd be wearing stuff. Yeah. Like I don't care. Yeah. But I think for me, like the functionality, as designers, designers don't really think about functionality. Mm. Um, when they're designing, they kind of just think about like how fire it is. For sure. For sure. Because so, sometimes I'll be looking like, where the hell would they? Can like you... I'm not going to the grocery <laughs> store. Yeah. With you, this can't, you can't go tomorrow with that. <laughs> exactly. You going to be crazy and send me out. Yeah. Now, have you ever had a fashion show that you kind of like? The, the, you was the like, the owner of it, or I ain't gonna say owner of it, but you was the creator of it. The production, production, yeah, yeah, director, yeah. lead, whatever. Um, uh, not yet. It's always been my dream to do a show in Detroit, whether I am curating it or I actually have my own pieces in it. Mm-hmm. Um, that I I would say that's that's you could add that on the things of the that I haven't really talked about yeah. wanting to do what I want to do. I don't know. I just think that like I've been immersed and immune to the world of fashion, and I want Detroit to experience that kind of luxury and that mm-hmm. kind of um, high level performance. Mm-hmm. And so, my dream definitely would be to have a show, um, but I haven't had one yet because 
I want to make sure my investors are there, my sponsors are there. Everything on point. Um, my finishes to my designs, execution is crazy. Mm. Um, and because I am a critic and I like things to go the way they should go, mm. um, I just want to be in a space where I can like produce my best. Okay. Now, can somebody like me go to a fashion show and have a good time? Absolutely. Okay, I got I got hit one up then. Because everything is complimentary, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go to a fashion show, there's open bar. Mm. You're getting, like, charcuterie. Okay. You know, you're getting, like, snacks. And then people are really, like, just wanting to connect and see what you do. Okay, there's so, so many people that, like, literally had exactly what you had on mm. in the front row, cheese and smiling. <laughs> and, like, just there to have mm. a good time. So you don't have to be, like, this fashion expert to be at a fashion yeah. show it really is comes down to like networking yeah i'm thinking about you know i gotta be a front row layers cross fish net shirt showing my nipples no <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm like, like no and, and even in the you know, business russell, yeah no <laughs> like russell russell Westbrook, you yeah, know what i'm saying like yeah he's daring yeah he's very like he's very daring how like okay how you gotta get out your comfort when it comes to fashion i believe yes with me i'm the most basic dude what what you see is what you get okay hat basic shirt you're you know comfortable yes Yes, but when it comes to fashion, should should people explore more and, and just touch on different things and not just be, okay, I'm going to dress like this every single day? Like, mm -hmm. if I go out, should I just try something different, try something new? Is I would definitely say try something new, mm -hmm. but be married to who you are, For right? Because sure. you have people that want to dress like whomever. Mm -hmm. um, and now athletes are like these big fashion extraordinaires For now. Sure. People no. are trying to dress like athletes. Mm -hmm. But it's like you can tell like who's trying to learn it, and you mm. could tell that you who just has it. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 for sure. And so I'm all for like being open to what's new, but I like when people like present their original selves because mm -hmm. it's just fashions are so oversaturated. Yeah, for sure, you know, and all men men are wearing purses now. Yeah, I, I can never get with and that. And it's not gay. It's not, but I can never rock with that. So it's you know it's interesting. Yeah, I will say, and they're you know they got no art. And stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Certain things I'm I'm, I'm gonna stay old school on. Yeah, <laughs> but like, like I'm not say. getting designs yeah. on my nails for sure. Yeah, I mean I get some little clear polish or whatever like yeah. that. You feel me? But nothing else. When I look at athletes, who do you look at? They be like, man, they really you know know what they are doing, and know how to dress. My favorite, and I saw him at All Star Weekend was, is it Shy or is it Shay? Shay, Shay Gilders Alexander. <sighs> yeah, yeah. He just understands. Mm. And you can tell he does not have a stylist. Like, you can sure. tell that he puts it on. Mm. I like Cools, too. Yeah, but you can tell Cools probably getting styled by his girl. What's her name, Winnie? But Cools was him yeah. before Winnie, though. Okay, okay, Like, okay. Cools still had, like, the flair and, like, the originality to what he liked yeah, yeah, yeah. before she came on a board. For and sure. I think because she's a model and she's in the fashion, it's like, well, no. she. Yeah. But no, like, he, him and Shay, yeah. they're, like, I just... I get it, like because I mean, there's some athletes that I'm looking into working with to mm -hmm. style and all that stuff, but those are like two athletes that I'm just like, yeah. they're having fun, they look amazing, and taking care of business. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I'd be that person walking through the camera won't even hit me like, oh, this. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just like wear a fly shirt. Like if I could find me a fly t-shirt, like oh, yeah. like an old vintage cash money t-shirt. Yes, or like, no and limit. some crispy sneaks. Yep, it ain't even that deep. Yep, like yep, just, yep. I'm good to go. Cause my son was clowning me. I went to um I went to a comedy show. I mm -hmm. had uh Alice Thomas was on the show. He um had a show, so he was he invited me, you know, saying so me and my wife I came. I took a picture with him and then my son called me like, Dad, those pants too big. I'm like, No, they're not, they they good. But like, you know what big pants are back in now. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But it wasn't big. Like he was clowning me. I hung the phone up on him. I was mad. Like, you know, but them young kids, they be wanna wear tight pants mm -hmm. and it just doesn't go good with a t shirt. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Cause then now it's like I got a I'm winning a point or something like that. Yeah, shirt. like you just shake weird. <laughs> for sure. Like you real big at the top and just like <laughs> you it, proportions are everything, for right? Sure. Proportions are everything. Yeah. So yeah, like you, you knew what you was doing yeah. with dump jeans. Yeah, because I'm like, hold on. So now he got me questioning my jeans, or so now I'm. <laughs> no, kids just like things to be like yeah. tight. Yeah. And it's just like, no. But see, his don't be tight. It just be like slim. Slim fit. It's not tight, though. Because like, I ain't going to allow him to wear nothing tight. Like, yeah. your legs looking like straws. Like, like just very, like, I see your calf yeah, definition. Yeah. No. Yeah, you can't put a wallet in your pocket. Cause... No, because it's tight and you're walking weird. Because <laughs> my thing is you should not be putting your pants on and trying to hold your breath. Like, you know what I'm no, saying? No, as a man, absolutely not. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so so if I'm coming to you, I want, I, I, Mike, I need you, you know what I'm saying? I need, to, I need you to help me, you know what I'm saying, with my fashion stuff. What do you do? Do you have a conversation with this person? Do you see where he's trying to go with fashion? Like... How do you go about, like, you know, helping somebody? 
It depends. I think if it's like a business, like more more business mm-hmm. professional, then you know we meet. You know we have coffee. We talk about, I guess his marketing strategy as far as style. Mm-hmm. Um, I look at his clothes. Like he shows me his wardrobe, and then he kind of show he tells me or describes the kind of man that he wants to be perceived as. For sure. And then I'll figure not. I'll figure out a way to bring that into life. But if it's personal. Mm-hmm. Like, there's so many guys, I just be like, come on, like, yeah. just come on. And they'll be like, all right, Micah. Yeah. And I style them, and it's just like, this is what I, this is, this is where I see the potential for you to, to how you, I want you to dress and whatever. And they're open and they also like it. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I want to, I, I do want to start being more, you know, suit. Suit and booty. I want to start doing, you know, saying going out and putting a nice little suit on real quick. But I don't like suit jackets. Okay. I just want the vest, shirt, tie. I, I hate suit jackets. I think that's fine, mm-hmm. but I would do it without the vest. If mm-hmm. you do it with the vest, I'll add like a sports jacket, mm-hmm. a sports jacket, like a nice leather biker jacket or a jean jacket or just a sports nylon jacket, like a for regular, sure. even the bomber jacket would yeah. suit like on your ASAP. Like for that's sure. fine. Right. Um, but if you don't wear the vest, then you can go with just a nice, nice fitted top, yeah. no tie. Good belt, good tailored slacks. And Gotta make sure I get in the gym so this, this stomach won't be showing or whatever. I mean, <laughs> so listen, when we when this podcast get nominated for some type of awards because mm-hmm. it's gonna happen soon, we make sure we gonna call Mike because she gonna dress she All gonna right. dress me. I don't know you you good with your bow tie stuff. You know how you is. So uh, you like your bow? You already good. Okay. He said I don't need you. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Noted. So I'm gonna have Mike because she gonna. <laughs> Yeah, once we get these awards coming in and start popping off, Micah gonna make sure she gonna handle yes. whatever I'm dressed in is gonna be because of her. You feel me? Period. Now, who who do you? I study shows with the podcast. I look at other podcasts yeah. and see the do's and don'ts. When to let somebody talk, when not to let have dead air. You know, mm-hmm. when you hooping, you look at other hoopers. Who do you look at as far as designing? Like, okay, I'm I'm looking at this person. I'm looking at this person. You know, who are you looking at and kind of getting the you know some influences from? Um, I think I am inspired by old fashioned houses mm-hmm. because they got to be doing something right. Yeah, for They're sure. Still around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think locally, like I look at my community, like I have my the top that I wore yesterday was my friend Donovan Dewberry's, mm-hmm. and then I, you know, and then um, just announced that I'm with God and I, and I'm the art di- director there, and mm-hmm. this is a black man from Detroit that is handcrafting glasses. For sure, yeah. So I'm that, looking yeah. at people that are in Detroit that have a similar mindset like they can do it mm-hmm. i don't need to go to new york and learn this stuff not I'm for sure the time but also you know i'm looking at town four town four is consistent their execution is crazy and they're still very relevant i'm looking at um coach like a lot of people don't know this but coach leather is better than uh louis vuitton and gucci sometimes mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. like they're they have genuine leather um and their their finish is crazy so to me, it's like, and I actually studied leather making when I was at CCS, so I know how to construct a shoe. I know how to construct a bag. Mm. But I'm looking at construction and consistency in the way that they just move. like, mm. And that inspires me, and I'm influenced by that because I want people to not see my name, but see the product and be like, that's Micah Shoemaker. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope. Now, if you can go back to an era in time as far as, like, you know, with, with fashion, what era would you want to be a part of? Good question. Cause I I seen a shirt that he had a mask, and I'm like, why the heck did I have that shirt so big? I was 140 pounds wearing like a two X one X shirt. So like, cause y'all was really into that. Yeah, like my shoes, my shoes came even you can't even see it cause the pants way over big it. Big Timbo's. Exactly. I got a belt. You gotta make a hole cause the the pants so big. Yeah. Like, I was wearing a size 38 pants. I only wear 38 pants now, and I'm waiting. Yeah, no, you was fooling. <laughs> yeah, for, for <laughs> sure. Fooling. But it was the time, right? Yeah. Everybody, look, all your boys look like that. Do red with a hat on, right? Y'all always come in like that, um, <laughs> in a chain, probably chain to my belly. Yeah, to my belly, just buddy. hanging right there. <laughs> exactly. Um, it was a statement, okay? It was a statement for you, and look, it's memorable. Yeah. You can laugh at it now. And for sure. granted, it's back. For sure, it is. I saw the look on the wrong way. It's back. Yeah. Um, I would say for me, it's probably, um, the two early two thousands and the seventies. Okay. The 70s, because, like, and this may be an unpopular opinion, but the men in the 70s, like, just the way that they had their chest out yeah, and, like, the bell-bottoms, yeah. I'm like, 
Mm. <laughs> sure. Like I'm not, you know, and some men are just like that's questionable, but I'm like that is beautiful. Yeah. Like hair all like silky smooth. I'm yeah, like that's sure. cute. Yeah. Like I want you. They rough. You know, stuff. like they yeah, it's just a vibe. Like, but like it's like they're 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 pushing on the boundary, right? Mm -hmm. And they're still very masculine, and then the, and then it's like falling in their music. So the music in the '70s and then the fashion in the '70s, it kind of like made sense. Mm -hmm. And then I say 2000s because. I just love me some Juicy Couture and some Ed Hardy, some yeah, Bond Dutch jeans. Sure. Bond like, Dutch, man. Damn, that's you know, like it was just a time, yeah. like on, you know, it's like, I guess like that pink Gwen Stefani era where like every black girl wants to be a rock star, listen to Paramore yeah. and have Bond Dutch jeans. For on. sure, for sure. So, my John, I used to love Jabos. Mm -hmm. That was the best pants ever. That's the, oh my god, <laughs> man! Guess, guess, a guess outfit, mom. Yes. Why you, you never gave me the whole outfit. It was just either the jacket or the jeans. It was never like both of them. I wanted the <laughs> he combination. said either or. Yeah, I wanted the combination. Like yeah. So that's when you had the koozie sweaters with the hat. Yes. Man, dang. I that was a good era. Yeah, I couldn't afford it. That's why I said I got it in pieces. You know what I'm saying? But and what was the ugliest stuff was iceberg. Bird. Iceberg was the stuff that they had, like the Looney Tune. Cr cartoon oh, character. I still don't like that stuff. Yeah, that was trash and that was expensive. I still don't like that stuff though. Yeah. Like the little Mickey Mouse stuff, mm. even now, mm. I'm just like, let cartoons be cartoons. For sure. No, for That's sure. just my perspective. Yeah, yeah. Now, you do a lot of things that I don't want to keep you for a long time, but I know you're a photographer. Mm -hmm. How do you make someone comfortable when you're doing a shoot? Gas them. Gas them. Gas them. Yeah. Gas them. I mean, like it takes a lot of courage to meet a stranger and basically flirt with their camera to get a good picture right mm -hmm. and so you know when i'm working with men or women it's important for me to like you know get them out of their shell and make them feel confident and, ma and make them feel comfortable with me and mm -hmm. so again i'm very personal so we talk about what they want with mm -hmm. the shoot and then i make sure that i do everything to make sure they're comfortable and we get that shot mm -hmm. now what do you see when you take a photo that the average eye might not see um, I like candid. Mm. So I don't like when people have this switch, this turn on switch. Mm. I like people to talk to me and engage and I'm, I'm still in those pictures while they're engaging with okay. me. Yeah. And so that's kind of like my niche, I would say, is taking pictures of people just being themselves mm. and then making beauty and art out of it. For sure, for sure, for sure. What's, who, who is the person you would love your dream shoot? My dream shoot. Hmm. I would say probably, I would say probably ASAP and Rihanna. Okay. Because they're crazy. Yeah. Energy is crazy. Their creativity is crazy. Mm. Um, and, and I'll bring Rennell Ice on there too. She was dating like uh, Ferg. Mm. Um, but just creatives that are like regular people yeah, yeah, yeah. were like super fire. So I would love to like be a part of some production on their shoot or just shoot them in their essence, like being dope. How do you feel about that picture when people are saying like, they didn't like you and him, him being behind her holding the baby and she kind of being like the strong one in a relationship? I actually reshared it. Cause I'm like, this is me. Yeah, yeah, for like sure. hold my kids. <laughs> I'm about to leave. I'm about to be the breadwinner. Like, let me take, let me take us to high places. For sure, for sure. So you were, you had no problem with it. No, like I was like this, if I was to be a celebrity mm -hmm. and we had just had the baby, that's the kind of shoot I would do. Where yeah, I'm like, yeah. babe, hold the baby. I can't imagine you being behind like, Hey, <laughs> Like hold the baby, my and her hand was back here, and yeah. he like had the baby and was just like comfortable. Like she has a billion dollar company, right? Push it off, and she fact. literally like is her. Yeah, yeah. And he is too. Like I love me some ASAP. I mean, and yeah, he yeah. fine, yeah. right? I mean, I don't know about that, but yeah, he, he, he fine. He dope. Like he, they're they're beautiful people. Yeah, yeah, good and, couple, but, good couple. Yeah, but I just like a woman that I like a woman that can. Like be independent, being her like her essence, mm -hmm. and I love a man that is so secure about his force and the power that he has and he possesses, where he's okay with. For who sure, she is. for sure, for sure. That's a fact. Because with that relationship, you definitely gotta be secure with yourself. Because she out here balling. She balling. <laughs> she rich. Yeah. She fine. For sure, it's definitely. And fine. she and she just multiple streams of income, right? For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and he just he's posting. He was just in a Gucci campaign. For sure. So they both kind of have, have to be secure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Yeah. They, gotta be. they probably can have whoever they want to have, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty yeah, much. And they pretty want much. each other. So you got to be certain about yourself mm -hmm. in that. Now, you speaking on music, um, your your brother, Caleb, mm -hmm. he, he, is that you in the background vocals at the end? Yeah. 
Yeah, we, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> talk, talk about that. Like, is that, like, I, I ain't gonna put you on spot as you a singer now, like, yeah, that, please you know don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not, you know, but, like, I seen something you had posted, I guess, like, you and your, your siblings was all singing and stuff yeah. like that. Like, how deep is that in love as far as, like, being a singer is that something that you can see yourself making an EP making a yeah so I'm actually like trying to release some music this year mm-hmm. um I again I'm an athlete at heart mm-hmm. so like I want to be amazing at everything I do yeah and I want to master and I think I'm in a space where like people you know they come to my events and they come to my shows or you know they're a part of a, a campaign or a shoot and they're like okay it's gonna be fire because Micah's create mm-hmm. like creative in this mm-hmm. but now I just want people to be like okay what can't she do yeah. like Dang, like Micah, like she's in real estate now. Like sure, I just want sure, me to sure. gotta be all over the place. And that's when you say the whole taking a real. You talking yes, about I'm trying like to put my everything. foot. In every, that's what I like about you because you don't just stand firm in one thing. Yeah, you, you got a piece stretch. of you in everything. You yes. know what I'm saying? You so, make a greater impact that way, but you also get more money that way. That's a fact too. Because you, so, you need a lot of streams of income to become a rich, a rich person. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm 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 writing. I've recorded it. Uh, I've recorded um, some things. But it really just, I have to like that song before I, I let you guys listen. And I really like the song, The uh, Nerves. Yeah, because it be true. It's relatable as hell. And it's loving, like, you get on my nerves. Yeah, he got a dope voice, too. Shout yeah, out to your brother. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, 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 because he's like, you got my nerves, this and the third. Yeah. But it's like, sometimes you can get on your nerves so much that you got to leave that relationship. Yeah. Like, this shit, you, like, you always on my nerves. Like, I love you, but, like, this is not for me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Now, the the, the word, it, well, the phrase dictator of taste, mm-hmm. where did that come from? Um, I feel like the people gave it to me. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I just decide, like, you know, people say, oh, you fly, you the fashionista. But it's just like, I heard that before, right? Mm-hmm. And I think for me, it's like people trusting me creatively or trusting my taste, whether mm-hmm. it's food, like men. Who have wives text me like Micah? Where should I take her? For Micah, sure. should I buy this for her? Like yeah. people just trust my taste, and for so sure. I'm like, this why I'm dictating. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I'm dictating. Sure. I'm for telling sure. y'all where to eat, where to shop, where to go, where to have a good time. I'm curating spaces mm-hmm. where people want to be a part. So I'm I'm a dictator. Yeah, for sure. Are you ever afraid to try something new? Yes. Are you are you afraid of failing? Yeah, I mean, I want to work out, but I don't because I don't want people to see me struggling and tired at the gym. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man. But you do ever go and think anything new uh, business-wise and just be like, damn, I don't, I don't know about this. Like, Okay, so, um, yeah, like the cannabis industry is really like going crazy. Oh, yeah, and I'm not up. a smoker. I've tried it before, but I'm not like huge on like substances that kind of can control like me. For sure. Um, but they're eating right now and I'm like, dang, like how can I get in the cannabis without it like looking a certain way and still getting to that coin? So yeah. there's a lot of things that I'm like trying to figure out like does that align with my brand? Yeah. But also like getting the bag. But also not just being about the bag, but being about like my personhood, my reputation. So yeah. this is definitely the bag episode because everything you talking on is <laughs> you I know, people lot. I like money. Hey, I think we all do. <laughs> we all trying to blow up in some type yeah. of way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, making a band that was a show back in the day. I don't know if you watched your, yes, familiar yes, with it. yes, yes, yes. If you had to do your making a band five as far as uh fashion designers, who would it, who would those five people be? Making a band, yep, fashion, fashion edition. Okay, Ooh, I love this question. Yeah, I try, I try, it can be Michael. men or women, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. I would say Deanna Taylor, okay. I would say Rihanna. Mm. I would say ASAP Rocky. Mm. I would put Shay in there. Um, I don't know about those red boots, Shay. <laughs> but you know, like <laughs> people's getting off on those. Like, come on now. Yeah, we have the red boots. We gotta talk about that. <laughs> um, and I would say, hmm, I need some like, Odie but Goody in there because I just want. I don't want to say young cats because I do know old. Mm. You know, or wise cats that do it well. Um, I would say Tracy Ellis Ross. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, good one, good one. Now, you say you want to release some music. When you release music, I want to do some, but I do this thing called the, the process. It's basically mm-hmm. behind the scenes yeah. with the phone. So whenever you go to the studio, let me know. We do something. Let's do it. But when, your album, the Micah album, Micah Shoemaker album, album. Mm-hmm. This, this is making a band. Mm-hmm. You and four other people. It could be singers, rappers, producers. Who would be a part of your band? 
If it was me and my, I mean, it would obviously be my siblings, right? Okay. Yeah, but mine is them. Cause but I know besides them, right? Because yeah. I got to say this because they're going to watch it like you. Ain't. Oh, yeah. You ain't, yeah, uh, you ain't cool with us. Yeah, definitely my siblings. Uh, But it would probably be, I would say, yay. Mm. I would, you know, yay, Kendrick. Mm. I would say, um, felt Frank on there. All right. Probably Marvin Gaye. And probably um, Jasmine Sullivan. Oh, you dope. You a dope person. I just tell from your music taste that you dope. Thank you. Yeah. I want to throw John Mayer in there too, cause okay. John Mayer like, like musically, like yeah. he's crazy on the guitar. Okay, yeah, um, for sure. But this we gonna keep it all black. For sure, for sure, for sure. I, young nigga shit. I'm sorry, I'm cussing. No, but, be yourself. This, this is my. This is a part of the show. It's young nigga shit versus some shit I've been through. Okay. That is something that you believed in as a young Micah that you don't agree with at all. You look at young Micah like, what would you thinking? Okay. What was was that? Hmm. I thought that people really. Can I say two? Mm, go ahead. Okay, it's, it's gonna be quick. Well, one I would say is like struggle makes an artist, mm. because like I was like the girl in high school. People was just telling me their business and mm. they're like their stay at home life. And I was like, oh, like they got something to sing about. They got something to dance about, <laughs> sure, right? Yeah. Like, you know, like how you taste food. And he's like, okay, this don't taste like my grandma pain. Exactly. Like, this is yeah, not good sure. macaroni, yeah, right? This ain't, this ain't them, them big arms. Exactly. Like, <laughs> sure, or yeah. like them shoes at the cookout. Like, yeah. you don't have them granddaddy. For sure, for sure. Those sandals, you know, yeah. Yeah, you don't have the sandals on. The barbecue boys. Right. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I really was like, dang, like I, I don't have no pain to dance to, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have like this sad story about like, oh, like almost got shot or oh, this crazy thing happened to me where mm -hmm. I've had to like think about it. And that's why I make records. Right. Mm -hmm. No. And I learned that like, no, like you can you can still like present your best and sing from a place of like vulnerability mm -hmm. and tranquility without having like pain and having trauma for sure and yeah. i really thought like that yeah, i had to some, like yeah. like someone had to beat up beat me up or something for <laughs> yeah. me to like have a good like record be on your marriage block exactly yeah, like sure. no girl like yeah. you could just just be talented and put in that hard work for sure for sure what's the other thing um i would say the other thing is uh damn what was the other thing gonna be oh shoot yeah, I okay i'm forgetting <laughs> um i think the other thing was gonna, gonna be like I'm like such a lover girl, right? Mm. And like I love dating and I like getting to know people and I like to see what I like when I, I don't like. Mm. But for me, I really thought like God was gonna like send my husband, mm. like he was gonna be floating in the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like so I just like ah! yeah, and it's just sure. this right fine here. man, like this full like God sent me for you, Micah. Yeah. But I'm learning as an adult and, and 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 as I have conversations with my friends that are married, like Sometimes it's not like this super dramatic intro. Like it really is a choice. Mm -hmm. Like, and I feel like God does His thing. Like when you make your choice, For and sure. as long as He's honorable and He's a man that respects you and He loves you and He's a good person, mm -hmm. right? He has conviction and the moral compass. Then ask like, and He He probably will be the one for you. But I thought it was like I like sonically heard God say yeah. like, this is your husband, this is him. he's floating, <laughs> he sure. has wings, <laughs> like, you know, there's money coming down in the air, like, yeah. it's this whole dramatic scene when it's like, it's not that, For right? sure, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. You, you kind of have some free will in, in choosing for sure. the, the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. For sure, so. for sure. Now, before I get to my last thing, I want to, this last question I'm going to ask is, uh, how do, what is success for Micah? What does success look like to you? This is a funny question. Because, um, you know, it could be money, it could be It is whatever. funny because I, I, like, I used to do, like, fake YouTubes and, and we would say, ask this oh, question. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think success for me is creating an, um, a goal for yourself, a mm -hmm. list of things. My, my, I could reach success by simply waking up and being here today, right? For sure. And so I think um, success is subjective, but for me, success just looks like being whole, being happy, and being joy filled, and being around the people that you love the most, mm. um, and and being able to be generous to mm. people too. So it's being financially uh, stable enough mm. to bless your com community, to live comfortably, but also be whole enough to love people properly. For sure, for sure. So. Okay, okay. Uh, last thing I do is before you know the one question I told you, but top three, I give you. You know what I'm saying? Some of you give me your top three. Okay. Top three childhood crushes. Celebrity. 
Ooh, I was like, do I got to say Yeah, but I say not DeMarcus. No, uh, like. DeMarcus. Because <laughs> DeMarcus um, over there on Waypoint. Right. LOL. <laughs> uh, I would say Nick Jonas, because okay. I was really into the Jonas Brothers. Yeah. Um, I would say Omarion. Okay. That's like everybody's. And I would say, who else? Um, I'm trying to think. Raz B? So I'm, I'm talking, he was always he had to be one of it that was just like mad because everybody wanted everybody on B2K but him. That is true. <laughs> like I'll be mad. Like man, um, you know I'm out this group. But dang, <laughs> childhood crushes. I feel so far removed from like that time. Really? Definitely Nick Jonas. Definitely Omari. All right, well give me. All right, you got, those are your two childhood crushes. Give me your adult celebrity crush right now, just one. So you that'd be that'd be your third one. ASAP Rocky. Okay, all right, that's your three. Yeah, she like ASAP. <laughs> I do, and he's yeah. such a butthole. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He, it, I kind of get that from the, like interviews and stuff like that. Yeah, he's just like, like he says things. It's like he's not a gentleman, but I feel like he is a gentleman. Mm -hmm. He's just rough. I like like people that are like rough a little bit. For some reason, when you, cause I mean, they go together. When you said something about Mario, I thought about Marcus Houston and stuff that he's going through right now. Saying how he met his wife and stuff, and she was seventeen, but he didn't oh, talk she, to her. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know about that, Marcus. You should have kept that to yourself. You a little know, bit. he was yeah, <laughs> oversharing, yeah. <laughs> making it bad for himself. For sure, like, come on, Marcus, just chill. Yeah. Man. I, I used to like your music, dog. Yeah. Top three moments in life so far. Top three moments in life so far. Ooh, great question. Um, one of them definitely is childbirth, uh, sure. bringing Judah. I don't think that I would have had as much courage as I do now. I don't even think I would have done any of the stuff that I do now if I didn't have Judah. Okay. So that, that's um, definitely a top moment. Yeah, top moment for sure. Definitely like the NBA. Mm. You go into the working with the NBA, going to our star weekend, being around celebrities and then partying with them too. Mm -hmm. Cause like I was on the list at the party and it just was like surreal, like shorty, like you're not here by trying to like be someone else. Like yeah, you they do. literally you were yourself, yeah, and, you and you got paid for being yourself, and you're for here. Sure. Everything was free. That's dope. And I think my third would probably be. Hmm. Yeah, that one always kicking your butt. <laughs> Honestly, I think it will be my shroom ceremony. Okay. Okay. Explain to me what's that. I ain't going to be It's like, like an ayahuasca. Going. It's like an ayahuasca. So, like, you go to Costa Rica, you go to okay. these places, and you take a certain dose of um, medicine, mm. mushrooms. Mm. And it's mm. kind of like this tool to heal or connect you from, like, trauma and past mm. experiences mm. or things that you've kind of dealt with or struggled with. Mm. But it brings you in, like, this spiritual realm. Okay. And so, yeah, it's a blessing and a curse because for me, I was like, why, what did I just open myself up yeah, to? Cause, yeah, because <laughs> there's just a whole bunch of stuff going on, yeah. but also it kind of showed me like, just like what I should be more like sensitive about when it comes to dealing with people mm. and also what I need to heal from okay. that I, you know, we all have blind spots and sure. places that we don't really see. Mm. And so it kind of helped me with seeing the places that I need to heal in and mm. be intentional and pay more attention to. Top three foods. Tacos, pot roast, and ice cream. <laughs> oh, what kind of ice cream though? What Lavend flavor? Lavender ice cream. Lavender. Oh, you man. gotta try that. Earl Grey ice cream is good too. I'm about to try because my my ice cream is cookie and cream ice cream with chocolate syrup on top. That is good. Yeah. You gotta have a fresh cookie with cookies and cream. Yeah, for sure. Dip it. Okay. Like okay. a homemade cookie. See now, that I, my stomach the way my stomach works now, I gotta make sure I'm off. I ain't got nothing to do when I eat ice cream. <laughs> oh, okay. like cause <laughs> it's a wrap on my like I can't. I did that one time I went to work and I, yeah, that work yeah. day was bad. You shouldn't have did that right before work though. You should have tested it out we went, a little bit. <laughs> it's like it's like cold stone. Whatever they put in that ice cream. It's no, like, that stuff is sugary though. It's like as soon as it touched my stomach. Oh yeah. It's a wrap. It's over. Cause it's too. They doing something. Yeah. <laughs> Top three TV shows. Um, Sex in the City, Gossip Girl, and I've really been into like these, uh, you know, like the little political shows. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm watching Designator Survivor and it's really good. Okay. Oh, you you know about that? 
Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Night okay, Agent, all that stuff. Like, Night Agent, it's I like heard, conspiracy stuff. I heard Night Agent was, was but a But I'm watch. into it because the government be governmenting. No, for sure. You got to be up on it. <laughs> yeah, so I like... <laughs> you got to be up on I it. I actually was being... Um, stupid one day like three days ago but they're hiring for a secret agent and i was like should i go train this <laughs> hey it, hey that'd be another part yo you know what I'm saying? Like, they make six figures yeah hey i wouldn't plus, I, would, I wouldn't doubt i wouldn't doubt you at all <laughs> like <laughs> just you know just knowing people business for sure yeah i definitely got traveling get to, a lot it's a vibe tonight agent because a lot of people didn't say that that's a good show yeah you i think you would like it for sure i'm gonna go ahead and check it out all right we end everything off with a drunk moment or a hot moment or both a time that you were drunk, high, and just some crazy stuff had happened, you know what I'm saying, or a funny story. Well, this is not my most finest moment, <laughs> but I was curating an event. Okay. And, you know, my homies were like, let's, you know, let's meet at such and such house. Yeah. And let's, you know, and I was, and at, and at the time, I was curating it with him, mm -hmm. my friend. And so we were like, um, so we met at his house first and all our friends are there okay. and we're kind of like pre-gaming. Yeah. But again, like this was like my first year that I was really like doing any of that mm -hmm. stuff. Right. And so got there and kind of was too, too tipsy before I got into the party. Yeah, 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 yeah. So coming down the stairs, woozy, yeah. you know, party was packed. Yeah. Saw people I hadn't seen in years. <laughs> yeah. And don't remember nothing. My mm. shoes were off. Yeah. I was walking around the party like, it's my party. Yeah. Like, grabbing stuff out of the, the locked up area of this <laughs> establishment and giving it out What's to it? people showing hospitality, right? <laughs> like, you're at the crib. Like, here you go. Right. Like, and it was, it was, it was gated. And yeah. I just slid the gate open and grabbed Tripping. and just was passing stuff out. Yeah. No shoes. And then I was so bad, like, I was throwing up. Yeah. And what I was by the stairs. What the heck you were drinking? And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's always bad. And like gave them my car. I was like, everybody here drinks on me. Yeah. It was my cash app card. So I didn't <laughs> even put money on that mug, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so my friends had to like cover yeah. So my friend, like Brandon actually, he had to cover what <laughs> I said was on me. Yeah. Um So you then, was really out there like balling out with the cash app card with nothing on there. Ball right. And it was like uh like Brandon, Micah gave us his car, yeah. and I couldn't even like really, like, help because I was, you know. Yeah, you gone. Right, and then like I'm on the stairs throwing up, and I'm like, "Thanks for coming." <laughs> One second, mm -hmm. be safe. Thank you so much for coming. Blah. And I'm literally like on the stairs, and like, so my friends, God bless them. They literally like emptied out the whole space because I mean yeah. it was around two three a.m. Mm -hmm. So everybody was pretty much gone. Yeah, and had no shoes on, and I stayed inside. And then like they all like drove the car up, looked around to see because Mike is a brand, right? Yeah. And now y'all know that I was going outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, so they were very intentional about like making sure that they knew who I was in that moment of me forgetting who I was, <laughs> and they Forget picked you. me up, right? Put me in the car. No one was there to get me on video or anything. Yeah. Grab my shoes out the street. <laughs> um, and that was, for me, it was one of my worst moments yeah, because sure. they literally had to remind me, like, girl, like, we had to pick you up. You wanted to fight us. Man. Like, you and Emma, like, you got the cash app card. You got my cash app card. <laughs> like, shorty, it's a cash app card. Yeah. You got to load it. Duh. Shots, so, shots on everybody. <laughs> yeah, shots on everybody. That's funny. And homeboy, at, Brandon had to, yeah, currently yeah. had to, he had to pay. Hold on, oh, oh yeah, yeah, shout out to you, man. You a good dude. Duh. <laughs> Hold on, um, before I end it, tell me what what was the what's name about real quick? Uh, mostly uh, Micah. So okay, so, yeah. So mostly Micah actually was. That was the time where I left Columbia. Mm. Was really sad, but like I'm not about to be sitting here doing nothing. For sure. So mostly Micah was for me to really like figure out what I wanted to do with my spare time mm. until I was gonna start my semester at CCS. So I had about seven months of figuring out what I wanted to do. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to start a blog. I want to talk about fashion. I want to connect with women. Mm. I want to, you know, talk about the fashion scene. So they were, as it was developing, so the DIA and other spaces were inviting me to their fashion shows to do coverage over it. Mm. And it was just a good time to, like, connect with people and take up time until I started my studies at CCS. For so. sure, for sure. Well, hey, this was a good conversation. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. I enjoyed myself. For sure. I, I appreciate you coming through with uh. You want to go ahead and get the people, you know what I'm saying, your IGs, your social medias, everything.
you know, where they can find you, websites, okay. all that stuff. You can find me at Micah Shoemake on everything. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just Micah Shoemake. Um, and follow me. <laughs> follow me. Hire me if you want to work. Let me know. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just Micah Shoemake. Yeah. People, I'm not laughing at her. I'm laughing at her. her my uh, my her, assistant her is, assistant. she gonna get the, she gonna get the angles. Oh, I'm talking about producer forehead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she all up on there, but she got the angles. For sure, for about. sure. Shout out. You need so, friends like that. Listen, you know She came friends, right in working, you know, listen. off the grapes. You know what I'm saying? Working. She worked, she prayed for me. She sure. styled me, she, whatever I need, she yeah, did. Shout out to uh, Big Cam. Yeah, Big Cam. What's the, uh... What's some um some kind of words you want to leave people? Some some motivational words. Um, I would say continue to chase the lion. You're never too old enough or too young enough to go after your dreams. Mm. Um, you can always start over. You know, we are the author of our own lives. So mm. tomorrow I can be a scuba diver. For sure. So yeah, do that. Stay true to who you are, and always be yourself wherever you go. For sure. I'm 36. Can I play EP? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's work. Man, I got a I got I got a beat maker. I'll for see sure. beats. Oops. For Sorry. sure, for sure. Hey man, it's uh, episode 157. Micah Shoemake. You know what I'm saying? She do everything. I can't even you know say one thing. She do a thousand things. <sighs> you feel me? Episode 157. Shout out to everybody. Voice of Detroit podcast MVP. We up. Peace.